the Gwaltney Group. The following is a sponsored program paid for by Robin Gwaltney. Gwaltney Group. Remax Results. Welcome to Rochester Real Estate, featuring Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group Remax Results and Andy Brownell. Here's Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Andy Brownell with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax Results. Good morning, Robin. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Good. I thought I I thought I scheduled the radio show so you can sit down and relax for a few minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh my goodness, you've been seeing my Facebook posts. I literally have been getting home from work at like. Nine o'clock, nine thirty, ten o'clock. Wow. Um, yeah, and the other night I got home at seven, and I was like, "Wow, I'm home pretty early tonight. Still light out." Well, then I got into multiple offers um, coming in on one of my listings, so I was going back and forth between the seller and the two buyers, and nobody ever wants to wait until morning to wrap that up. You know, that's too much playing with people's minds, right? So we got that all taken care of, but then it was like eleven. So I'm, yeah, it's it's been busy. It's definitely spring market definitely feeling it and i mean i saw this coming i'm not surprised it has been a busy year did it arrive a little earlier than you anticipated um well we had such a mild winter and if you remember back to some of those shows i said i felt like that was a factor that played a part because you know normally if it's 30 below and wind chill and wind is blowing all over snow and no, nobody wants to go out looking at houses. It's like, heck, we'll stay snuggled in for a couple more months. But we had such a mild winter that I, I definitely feel like that played a, a part. Mm. And, I mean, I think those people that did get out and buy their houses in January and February and they did listen and didn't have to compete. And, and man, I can even show you some purchase agreements I wrote where the sellers paid the closing cost for the buyer or we got a few thousand bucks off, 5000 here, 10000 there. We're not seeing that now. You're back to cash offers and no inspections. You got it. And wow. full price for sure. Starting at full price for sure. And and what's really sad is if you, sometimes you know you're going to start at full price and you're still not going to stand a chance. And it's tough because, like, say we have a buyer and they're approved to 300000 It's hard to say, well, we don't even want to look at the houses that are priced at 300000 because they're going to sell for 310 or 320 or 330 or whatever. But we still look at them, and when we write an offer for three hundred, you're getting really lucky if you win that now. So that's where you need that emotional connection to the seller, right? Exactly, and where they so, see and you just, compassionately or something. Exactly, and then maybe too they, you know, things just work out right. Like maybe they say, "Oh, you're coming in to be the." the new principal at the school that my kids grew up at or that I taught at for 30 years. I mean, sometimes there's just connections or, oh, you're going to be doing your residency in the department that I I did mine in or we retired from or you, you just never know. You know, there's sometimes there's just connections that matter and some people it's not about the money, but often oftentimes it's like the heartier the dollar sign, the oh, stronger sure. the offer. And Often, um, you know, and we have to be careful. We can write letters. We can write letters to the sellers. Some agents will not present them at all, which is unfortunate because I think the seller has the right to see them. But we really have to guide our buyers because sometimes they do cross fair housing rules. You can't talk oh. about things like, you know, this will be the perfect place for my children to grow up because now you're, you know, telling them that you have a family and you have children and they could be. They could make a decision one way or the other, which would be, you know, familial status as one of the protected classes. So you have to be careful in what you put in there. But again, if you're working with a good agent and you want to write a letter to the seller and you can just write a letter about how immaculate the home is and how they took such great care of it and the pride of ownership shows. And we want you to know that we would love it just as much and take just as good care of it. You know, so if you say things that you mean, I mean, I'm not telling you to blow smoke, but if that's the way you feel and you you really mean that, then sure, I think sellers appreciate knowing that. So if you can write a letter without crossing the line, then by all means, I think it's a great way to help you win in multiple offers. How about if I'm a military veteran? Because I'll tell you this much, I, I would put a lot of weight in that, I think. 
if somebody yeah. were to tell yeah. me their story of service to the country. Yeah, and so, you know, I think um, sometimes you can say things like, um, you know, when I saw the flag in your front yard, it made me feel right at home. I mean, I just had this happen, okay? So we had a listing, and there was an American flag in the front yard, and the seller is a vet, and the buyer is a young vet. And she, in her letter, she said something. She didn't know the seller was a vet. I mean, maybe she knew. Maybe she researched him and found out because nothing's really too private these days. No. <laughs> you can find out pretty much anything you want to know. But anyway, she wrote about how um, one of the things that she dreamt about when she got a home was to put a flag pole up and, and hang a flag because she is in the military and, it's, and she's very proud of herself or, you know, very proud of that. And I, I, I mean, I think that definitely, it was multiple offer situation. And I definitely think that played a part. Oh, nice. I like yeah. that. But you pointed out to me in the past that sometimes it works the other way for our veterans because they're using their Veteran. benefits. Yes, yeah. yes. And I get so upset about that. I just get so upset when they say, Oh, Robin, your offer was so good, but it was a VA loan. And the other one that won was conventional. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, are you kidding me right now? And I say, well, can you explain to me why? I mean, I've also explained this. If a VA loan, because it's backed by the government, the appraisal is different, right? So they're looking sure. for things that an appraiser at a conventional loan is not. So if if I buy a house and I'm getting conventional financing, the bank could care less if the paint is chipped on the house or the there's a cracked window because they think, okay, that's up to her. She can fix that when she gets there. But with a VA loan, those things will make it not pass the inspection. So I can see if you've got a house that's in, in tough repair and you think, okay, maybe this house isn't going to qualify for a VA loan, maybe it's not going to pass the appraisal, I would be better off guiding my seller toward the conventional financing, and this is why. But when the house is in mint condition and there's not one reason why it wouldn't pass a, a VA appraisal with flying colors, and then the, the agent says to me, they just didn't like that VA financing. Oh, that is so frustrating to me. Well, it's good we're talking about because uh, maybe people will recognize that they, whatever perception they have about the VA financing really isn't true. Right, exactly. I mean, I've done a lot of VA financing. I mean, I'm not a lender, but I've had a lot of buyers that use VA financing with no problems whatsoever. So, And it is a benefit. Earned it's a by these people. Service, yes, yes, exactly. So please don't disregard that as a negative, or or think that um, you know it's a weaker loan because by by no means is that the case. So now that you're back into the multi-offer situations, <laughs> is that almost like doing an auction? <laughs> well, it can be. Um, some it just depends on how the how the seller wants to handle it. So I can tell you, I listed a house last week and it was an expensive house. It was almost one and a half million dollars. And an offer came in that the sellers really liked. And they said, oh, perfect. We'll, we'll take it. And they hadn't signed it yet because they were both at work, both very busy. They live out of state now. And by the time the afternoon came, I got a call from another agent saying, hey, I'm going to send you an offer. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, just to let you know, I have already sent an offer to the sellers, which they are signing. But I looked, and they hadn't signed it yet. So, of course, I'm working for the best interest of the seller, right? If I can get them a second offer and get people fighting over it, that's my job. So I um, said, don't sign it. Don't sign it. There's another offer coming, so it could be better. And so then, of course, I called the first agent to say, hey, just to let you know, they hadn't gotten around to signing the offer yet. They're just getting home from work. They're on a different time zone. Um can I please um, let you, I just want to let you know so that you can let your buyers know that there is a second offer coming. Now, of course, I didn't share any terms of that offer, but he said, okay, I'm going to talk to my buyers. So then his buyers sent back a stronger offer. So, you know, it raised up the offer and the initial buyers did get it. And I think that in this case, the offers were, were in the end very similar, but I think the buyer, the sellers rather, 
felt like, oh, geez, you know, we kind of gave them our word, told them we were going to sell it to them. We don't want to be those people. And so, again, just another factor. But it's not like they settled for less money because no. those buyers were smart and they raised up. So that second offer coming in just got the sellers more money, quite a bit more money. And that happened on a million and a half dollar house that quickly. Wow. Yeah. That's wow. awesome. We're in a very, very good real estate market right now. All right, Robin, we'll take a quick break, and we will return in just a moment. Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, REMAX Results on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 To Rochester Real Estate with Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, REMAX Results, and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back. Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. We're talking about just how busy things have gotten over the last few weeks in the Rochester area real estate market. It's uh, it's impressive and fascinating to me at the same time. Yes. Um, well, I was just looking at one of the articles that I had set aside for this week's show, and it's from the National Association of Realtors, and it's titled Contracts contract rather signings reach a new high for 2024 and it says pending home sales kicked off the spring season with a strong start but challenges of the home buying market remain new NAR data shows and so basically the NAR the National Association of Realtors is forecasting existing home sales to increase by nine percent in 2024 and then by another 13.2% wow. in 2025. And they also are forecasting that housing starts, so new builds, will increase by 1.2% this year and about 5% next year. So home sales had lingered at a 30-year low uh, since 70 million more Americans live in the country now compared to three decades ago. It's it's inconceivable to think about that, right? But it's it's inevitable that sales will rise in the coming years. Inventory will grow steadily from more home construction and various life-changing events will require people to trade up, trade down, or move to another location. So that kind of brings me to, you know, we've talked over the past several months about how a lot of people feel like, oh, I do not want to move. I am locked in at a really great rate, so I am staying put. This is where I'm going to stay because I know I'll never see 3% again or I'll never see 3.5% again. So this is it. Well, sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't because sometimes the house just gets too darn small for you. Sometimes the house becomes too darn big for you. Sometimes something, you know, a job or a family change or something takes you across the country. So it's just not in the right location. Sometimes marriages happen and it requires a new home. Sometimes divorces happen. So at least one party's moving out. Sometimes they sell it and both parties move on. So, I mean, there's always going to be those life changes that will move people. And even though the people that are locked in at the great rates still are hanging on, we're seeing more of the new buyers coming into the market who are saying, okay, so the rates are up a little bit, but they're not up that much. Well, they're not looking back to 20 or 21, they're looking back to this time last year. You know, this time last year they were at about 6.4. Now they're at about 7%. So, yeah, that seems like, darn, they've gone up, but not like, oh, they used to only be 3% and now they're 7 Right. So it's just, you know, the, the object becomes further away in that rearview mirror, right? So it's right. easier to forget. So I think we're seeing a lot of that. And, of course, inventory remains really tight, and that's why the multiple offer situation. So it's very odd and ironic that we would have high interest rates and yet high sales all at the same time, and it's all because of the low inventory. But I will also add that historically 7% is not that high. Exactly. I actually saw something on Facebook the other day and um, it was about, let's see, what did it say? Um, the average interest rate, the average over the last 30 years was 6.48. Yeah. 
over the last 30 years. So we're just a slight tad bit higher than average right now if you're looking at the last 30 years. And I bet we're pretty darn close to the the mean or we're below the mean, I bet. Yes, I agree. I agree. So I'm excited to see that I have a couple more articles in my stack that are also pointing fingers saying that new home sales will be climbing. There will be more and more new construction. I mean, when I got into the business, my gosh, new homes were everywhere. Every good realtor had a builder to rep, and every good builder was putting models out there so that they could get people in, buy the models, and sell more houses. So we always had builders and new construction, you know, that we could sit in and host on open houses on the weekends and meet buyers. And boy, it is tough to find any models anywhere because as soon as they start building them, somebody comes in and wants to, you know, buy it and then pick everything out, which the builders love. I think we're also going to see, if we're not already seeing it, some innovation by these builders. Oh, yeah. To address the, you know, their higher costs to try to figure it away, you know, and you have pointed out their margins have changed too. They're accepting yeah, lower a lower margin. margin on the deal. Sure. And also I feel like, um, you know, we've seen things like what they'll do is instead of lowering the price, which might not be the answer, they'll lower, they'll do like a buy down on the mortgage rate. So for the next, like they'll do a three, one buy down or a two, one buy down. So the next three years, or the next two years, your payment's going to be lower. And maybe that's going to help you adjust to, oh, you know, then my school loans will be paid off. Or by that time, I will have gotten a raise or I will have finished graduate school. And so my um, new position will be this. So it gives you a little adjustment period so that you can get into that house before the prices go up for two or three more years worth. And then just get a payment that would be a little easier to swallow for those first couple of years and then work your way into the final payment. So there are some creative ways for sure. There's, you know, where, you know the old saying where there's a will, there is a way. And I see the city of Rochester, um, the city council meeting on Monday is a study session, I think, and they're going to be, oh, no, that was last week, actually. That was last week's meeting where they approved these incentives now to try to lower the starter house, the brand new starter house cost. Nice. By, yeah. you know, waiving some of the fees. Yes. In certain situations, so, so the builders can pass along those savings. I, I, they're, you know, they can do it for. I think they're saying, you know, upper twos maybe. Nice. That would be so awesome for real. Those will get gobbled up immediately. Oh my gosh! Are you kidding me? You, you just think of this. Think of the the three hundred dollar eighty five inch TV at Walmart on Black Friday. Okay, <laughs> it'll look something like that. Yeah, big lines. <laughs> yeah, people will be mowing each other over to get those babies. <laughs> well, why don't we take a quick break, and uh, we'll be right back in just a few minutes with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, REMAX Results. It's News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96 Council. Welcome back to Rochester Real Estate with Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back. I'm Andy Brownell with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. Robin, earlier you were talking about, I think it was the National Association of Realtors, one of them, uh, a projection on sales increases. What was that percentage that you were talking about? So according to this article, it says the pending home sales have increased 3.5% from February to March and another 1% between March and April. And NAR is forecasting a 9% increase in sales this year. So Wow. I'll tell you, I'll share on, on my, on a more personal level. Um, our team through the end of April this year is up. Now we had a really good year last year. Okay. And we're up 58% year over year. Wow. So we are just really, really busy. And I just, I love the energy around here because everybody is just really working hard. And, you know, we set ourselves apart because I'll see, I'll see different agents say, yeah, I don't, 
I shut my phone off at 6 p.m. or I don't work on Sundays. And I just, it boggles my mind. And I, I'm not judging them. They have the right to do whatever they want to do. But I have always seen this job as service, a service industry. And so when do we serve our clients? We serve them when they, when it's convenient for them. So that's when they're not working. So that is oftentimes evenings and weekends. So we embrace that and we all, you know, plan on Saturday and Sunday to be two of our busiest days of the week. And lately it's more like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, (laughs) a little bit of a lull on Monday and Tuesday, but we're not complaining. Like the energy is awesome around here. So um, I know we talked about this last week, but we did 100 transactions through the first 100 days of the year. Right. And that's our goal to just stay on pace for a deal a day, a deal a day. So we're not, we're not sitting around. We're getting stuff done. <laughs> I bet you're besting that one per day right now, the way things have been going. Yeah, I think we're pretty close. Like um, after the weekend, yeah, we'll probably be, we'll probably jump ahead a little bit. And I think um, I have two offers to write right now. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're, we're staying on target. I can tell you that. And the one thing is pretty proud of that. With doing this show with you every Saturday for the past, I don't know how many years it's been, four years. How many years has it been? Four? It's, I mean, it's been a while. Well, it was well before the pandemic, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah, more than four. Yeah. yeah. Five, six. Um, I mean, I did it before with, um. oh, my gosh, my dear, sweet friend. Tell me his name. I'm a little drowning. Rich Peterson. Point. Rich Peterson. And I told the radio station, oh, I don't even want to do this show anymore after Rich is gone because I won't like doing it with anybody else. <laughs> so awesome. And boy, I've had to eat my words more than once because I have thoroughly enjoyed doing this show with you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. But you know, Rich became a client of mine. Recently, I sold his home. We all <laughs> so do eventually, fun. right? Yeah, it was fun to reconnect <laughs> with Rich. It was really awesome. So, And it was also fun to know that he still listens to the show. So, uh, yeah, exactly. you better, right? Uh, exactly. We all have to glue our dial <laughs> in the same place when we go to work here. That's oh, part of the okay. rules. But my comment was going to be that, in the you know, discussion of commissions and everything else, what I've learned from all these years talking to you and your team, that how much goes into this whole transaction and how much is happening behind the scenes and and that's, you know, that's why you pay that commission. Yeah. And a lot of, you know, I mean, everybody has a different level of marketing as well when it comes to selling houses. And I actually come from the mindset that it takes money to make money. And when somebody hires me to sell their house, I take that on as a very serious um, assignment. Right. And of course, that means things like professional photography and professional staging and Um, sometimes getting in a handyman to get some things done that they need. I mean, there's a lot that comes to, comes with it, right? Helping them get their house prepared for the market, giving them advice on, which, I mean, I've been out shopping with clients, helping them pick out new paint colors or new carpet. It's like, we take it, we take that whole thing very seriously. And we're always willing to, you know, I feel go the extra mile and just do more than others are willing to do. People say, oh, my gosh, your pictures are so great. Do you take them? No, I don't take them. (laughs) I pay several hundred dollars for a professional to take them because I'm being hired to market a property, right? And it's crazy. Sometimes I'll look at a listing, and it's not always low-priced listings, but I'll look at a listing online, and the agent has actually taken the photos with their own iPhone, and sometimes you'll even catch a picture of the agent in the mirror. Sure up to take a photo i'm like oh my goodness so, you know it's i've not, seen those pictures they're not all the we're not all the same there's a lot of good realtors out there and there's some that you know aren't as good that's all i will say well i just i've appreciated the examples of full service that i've heard over these years that's for sure well thank you i appreciate that that means a lot now do you have any listings robin I do. Let's see. What do I have that I want to talk about? So um, I don't know if you remember a few years ago, we had some um, townhomes being built out there behind the mink farm. Yep. And then that thing just kind of paused for a while. And now we've got some more. So there's two more units to sell. And then there's two more that are going to be close to being ready to sell. And those are nice one level, zero entry, no steps, 
a big two car garage, two bedrooms, two baths. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, they have, let's see, just over 16, just about 1650 square feet and beautiful. And they are 479 nine. So there's two that are ready to go and two more that'll be ready within weeks. So we've got those. Um, we've got a townhome that we just listed out in Stewartville. It's 18. Oh, those, those ones I spoke about are on Piccadilly Lane. So right. 8, 885 and 889 Piccadilly Lane Northwest. That's by um, Essex Park, that area. Yes, correct, correct. Um, 1819 Daniel Lane Northeast is a nice, uh, two bed, two bath townhome, two story out in Stewartville. It was built in 2005 and that is listed. It's got a one stall garage. It's listed for 2399. Um, we've got, oh, a new one out in, a couple of new ones out in Orinoco, actually. Just one of them went on yesterday, and I think one comes on today. Uh, 1106th Lane Northeast in Orinoco is four beds, two baths, 2,623 square feet, has a two-car garage. It was built in 1988, and that one is, um, 529.9. And then the other one in Orinoco is 315 Pine Ridge Court Southwest. It's a contemporary home. And the owners have just done some fabulous things to it. It's a four-bed, three-bath, and that one is 2,140 square feet, and it is 539.9. That one was built in 1983 and sits on two acres. So those two beauties in Orinoco, the one that we had last week in Orinoco, sold last week, so... You know, maybe Orinoco is the new hot spot. I, <laughs> um, I think everything's becoming the hot spot. Everything's becoming the hot spot. We've got a beautiful two story at 1889 Shannon Oaks Boulevard up in Northeast. That's a four bed, four bath, 3,200 square foot house with a three car garage. Um, it was built in 2008, but you would never know that because the current owners have redone it completely. And I mean, they replaced the windows. They replaced the siding. They added maintenance-free decking to the front and the back. They put on a new roof. They, um, the house, it's just a whole new house. It's beautiful. You drive by and it looks like a brand new house. But the inside is also gorgeous. She's done really uh, elaborate closet organization in all the closets. So if you're looking for a nice big two-story for 680 in the northeast, you might want to get to that one. It sits on a half acre lot. Um, yeah, just I call that a realtor's dream because they take so much pride in ownership and it just presents really well. Um, I've got one here at five one five one one zero Layman Lane Northwest. It's a five bed, four bath, four thousand seventy eight square feet. It was built in nineteen ninety nine. Had a recent price reduction, so it's five fifty. It is a whole lot of house. Over 4,000 square feet for 550,000 over near the... Wow, uh, that is big. Yeah, yeah, it's really big. It's nice. Um, if you want to go over to Wabasha, I've got a couple of nice listings over there. There's 1006 Jefferson Avenue in Wabasha, which is three beds, one bath. It's a total of 1,200 square feet. It's listed for 2699 It does have a tuck under two-car garage, but then in addition to that, it has a nice big shed. Um, so like a, the previous owner worked on cars out there. It's a really nice place. Uh, we have some land at XXXX Rocky Creek Drive Northeast. So it's yep. you know, off Broadway. You know where that it is. One million two hundred thousand. So if you have some kind of a idea for, a, I don't know. What you want to put over That's there? That's right, right by velocity. It is, it is. Yep, definitely is. Uh, we have uh, out in the country in Wabasha, down on the prairie, as we call it, six five nine seven two one hundred and forty third Avenue, and that's a three bed, three bath, three car garage, sits on just under two acres, and that one's three forty nine nine. And then if you're looking for in the city. In that same price range, we just have an immaculate, just beautiful multi-level that is three beds, three baths. It has a two-car garage, 
it was built in 1972, but again, you'd never guess it. One owner home that's really taken a lot of pride in their home. And it has a attached extra space that she had used as a, a beauty salon, but there's lots of good ideas. I've heard somebody say it would make a great in-home daycare or just like a grand pad for, you know, mom or dad to come and stay with you as they age because it's got its own bathroom and it the door enters into the kitchen of the house. So, I don't know, really nice. Actually, um, we did have a person who wanted that, but it was contingent upon them getting their home sold, and then they never got their home sold, and they got mm. frustrated in another state. So I don't know anything about their market. But anyway, so that one's available if All anybody's right. looking for that. So, yeah, that's that's what we've got. You got, um, you got plenty. How do you, how do we get a hold of Robin? Please. Do we want to talk about any of the real estate issues we've talked about, or you're ready to sell or buy? Yeah, and and guess what? Let me add one more thing. If you're ready to sell or buy anywhere in the entire country, because I can help you. you I have go. got great connections everywhere. But whatever I can do for you, please feel free to call me on my cell phone, and that number is 507-259-4926. Fantastic, Robin. Great to talk to you again, and we'll catch up next week. Sounds great. All right. Robin Gwaltney with Gwaltney Group Remax Results on Newstalk 1340, KROC AM and 96.